Before we start, I would like to talk about the story a bit, more so the characters than anything else. I'm going to start with you. In general, you is a pretty charming character with her kindness and sarcasm as well as her smart remarks. Other than that, there's nothing interesting about her, except the fact she has two variations of her name. A simple answer would be that kids and Takeshi's roots take place at the same time but in two different parallel worlds, hence differences like Coco and Sarah and Yu's name, but that thought is a complete contradiction. Since both roots branch from the stem of the Y, which makes one of the roots fake, or at least branch from a different starting point, but I honestly don't think that's the case, since I discover a much simpler answer regarding the timelines for the roots. Before I tell you what the answer is, I'd like to provide the evidence that leads up to it. In Yu's epilogue, Dr. Tanaka said something interesting that confused me a bit. She said, It was weird. Why would she say that? And in plain English as well. I'm pretty sure most Japanese people know some basic English, so with that they could figure out that what Dr. Tanaka said was in fact a double meaning. She was saying she is you, as in the same being, as well as saying that her name is you as well. Add this with the fact that Dr. Tanaka said that you isn't her daughter, but still a part of her, really suggests that you beside Kikana is a clone. The idea of clones being in the story isn't far-fetched, as we learn about them from Sora. This answers why Yu has two variations of her name, despite being the same person, technically, as well as provide us a basic timeline in which Takeshi's roots take place in the past, and the kids' roots take place in the future. And I believe this because I think that Dr. Tanaka is indeed Yubisai Harukana, the Yu from Takeshi's roots. And, you know, obviously Yubisai Kikana would be the clone. As for how, how far in the future, you know this game in the number 17, so I'll assume it's 17 years in the future. And I think that, yeah, that's definitely enough time to build another Lemu after Intergeshi's roots, where after both his good endings, where they, you know, got, got sunken, they sunk. But I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Anyway, it's proven further that Dr. Tanaka is Yubisai Harukana because she looks at the kid and says, It's been a while. Now, enough about you. Let's talk about the protagonists. I had to bring up you first to be able to talk about the protagonists better. Yeah, I think you know what I'm about to suggest. Both Kid and Takeshi are clones. Once I figured out what you was, I started thinking if the other characters were clones too. At first, the idea may be contradictory, because aren't clones of people supposed to look the exact same? Not necessarily, because in some other literature, some characters are considered clones, yet they don't look like their real counterpart, yet they are considered clones because they are made from the DNA of the original. So what I'm saying is that I believe that the Kid and Takeshi from the prologue are the originals, and that the Kid and Takeshi that review the story in their own roots are the clones. I think I have an idea as to why they look different. I think it's because they were created to be different people, and they're not a complete copy of their originals, hence why their appearance is different along with their personality, as they are much more mature and smarter in their own roots. As for the memories, I guess they retain their memories because, you know, the whole Lemu thing, like the plan. I don't know, something's happening at Lemu, I don't know what, but they had to retain their memories so the whole thing could work. This also clears up a contradiction in Takeshi's roots, as he dies in both his good endings, in which I guess it's necessary, because I guess knowing the personality of Takeshi, if he survived, he might have ruined the whole plan. The whole... 
you know, whatever is happening at Lemu, whatever the whole project or whatever it's called, you know. So if he survived, it would it would get ruined, you know. Either he'll be upset that he's a clone, or he would refuse to work with the people who are doing this project. So this clears up the contradiction that if Takeshi roots in the past and kids roots in the future, why is Takeshi still alive in the future? So that that was simple. And the only important thing about Takeshi's endings, because both seem to be canon and they both lead up to kids roots in the future, is that Tsugumi survives. That's the only important thing, is that Tsugumi survives and she remo and she knows that Takeshi is dead. That's basically all. Speaking of Tsugumi, let's talk about her now. I think I've proven my point about the protagonists, even though I'm still unsure about the whole idea about them being clones. Anyway, on to Tsugumi. So first things first, is she a clone too? No. I definitely don't think so. Even though she does look the same in the future and in the past, it's because she has Kure, and that makes her appear young no matter how old she is. So that means that Tsugumi in Kid's Roots is in fact the very same one from Takeshi's Roots, and that's what I believe. So that's why she drops hints towards the kid about him dying on May the 7th, and stuff like that, while well, she didn't do that with Takeshi because she didn't even know what to expect. I believe that she's part of the project because, well, in the beginning, in the prologue, she was in the lemur suit. You can tell because of her voice and it was hinted in Tsugumi's route where Tsugumi punches the Geshi. What was that Sora's route? I don't know, but Tsugumi does punch Takeshi like the Tanuki punched him. And that really suggests. But why was she there in the first place? Well, she's probably part of the project. I mean, you know, she she was even expecting something to happen in the elevator with Takeshi. She's like, oh, this can't be happening now. So, probably... Probably the whole thing was starting sooner than she expected. Now on to Sarah. Nothing really noteworthy to say about her. We know she's the kid's twin sister and she has the ability to see a certain wavelength of light in which her mirror shows a picture of their supposed, supposed father in which I think he looks very similar to Takeshi. Is it poor character design? Or is that what the clone Takeshi looks like and Sarah and the kid can't see the similarity but we do? Either way, it's interesting and if I'm right, then it's suggesting that Takeshi is the father of Sarah and the kid. But I find that really far-fetched, but knowing Uchikoshi and how he likes to blow people's mind, who knows? Now on to Coco, the girl with the most mystery behind her. We know she's the daughter of a scientist that died and worked at IBF, the secret area at Lemu, for the creation of the TB virus. Or, no, I'm not really sure why, but... I don't think he created it, but he, he was helping creating it, I think. Coco, just like the kid, can access the fourth dimension and send some part of herself to the future to communicate with the kid. That is why, well, I think that she sends like an image to the kid in his brain to create the illusion that she's there, but in reality she isn't. So that's why the kid is the only one who can see her but, and also not physically touch her. It's really interesting and sort of mind-blowing. There is some evidence suggesting that Coco is indeed doing this in the past because Takeshi finds Coco talking to someone yet nobody's there. And I bet she was talking to the kid. 
Though I don't know if she's aware that she has this power, if she even does have it. I don't know if she just does it unintentionally, so if she can also see the kid too. But uh, uh, it's sort of confusing. It, yeah, <laughs> I don't really get it, but th yeah. There's still a bunch of things that I'm curious about, like who or what exactly stays behind in all the endings, as well as why the life reading constantly changes and other stuff I want to know. It's, both, it's mostly confirmation that I'm waiting for, but then again, I like Uchikoshi because of his plot twists, and I hope I'm wrong with some of these things I've said because I oh I always like being mind blown. I wish I can record my face, but I risk volume. I don't really want to shout because I usually record at night, and I could wake up my parents. Anyway, that's all that I wanted to talk about. On to the next three episodes because. These next three episodes, or three hours, were recorded two months prior to this segment. So some of the things I said might be a bit outdated for from everything that I, I've talked about now. But anyway, enjoy! And I'm glad to be back. Sorry <laughs> for being gone for so long. In this world, where the boundaries between light and shadow blended, there was no sound. The motion of white waves of darkness surged forward, permeating my skin and shaking my whole body. Something, like a hard shell, began to resonate and to emit a black light from inside. There was no sign that the waves would stop. Rather, they seemed to be getting stronger and stronger. A crack ran down the outer husk, began to spread like the strands of a web and soon covered the entire shell. Pieces began to fall away, dropping to the floor. I was able to glimpse what lay beyond the shed husk. It was dazzling. Particles of light, whiter than white, filled the air and began to collect into one another. The light formed a vague image. The image jumped into my field of view. A fragment of a scene familiar to me, Now we're Takeshi. I woke up in the middle of the conference room. Eh? Me? Why did I feel at such a knees with me? If you stare at something for a long time, it can seem to warp and change. The unnaturalness I felt right then seemed a lot like that phenomenon. As though I was taking something for granted that I shouldn't. It was probably just my mind playing tricks on me. And not thinking any more about it, I shook Coco's shoulder. She was next to me, asleep head down on the table. Hey, get up, it's morning. Thank you. Uh. Rubbing her eyes, Coco got up slowly. Huh? Oh, Huh? Oh yeah, Coco, you have a brother? But hey, you got the two of us mixed up. Hey, isn't this... Yeah, it's the same conversation we had. Uh, on one of Takeshi's roots. On his own roots.違うよ. Coco was still half in dreamland. Late for school? What are you talking about? Uh, listen. Stop messing around. We're going to eat. Yeah, I remember that conversation. When Coco and I made it to the kiosk, everyone had gathered there. Tsugumi, Sora, you, and the kid, all of them. I made my way into the submarine and opened the door of the refrigerator in the sandwich shop. Oh! I spotted sausages hidden in the back, so I decided to make everyone hot dogs. Soon after, I made breakfast for everyone, I leaned out over the counter and said, Alright, whoever wants to eat, get in line! Oh, well here you go! Help yourself to ketchup and mustard. Ah, 
を並びなさいよ次は私 Right, I believe this is Dr. Tanaka. That that's what I believe. That that is Dr. Tanaka. This was probably the way things usually were at the shop. There still wasn't any schedule as to when we might get out of Lemu. But in the meantime, we'd stop thinking about the difficult and negative things. If you're wondering, no, I didn't spoil myself. I just. I had lots of time to think about this during my two week hiatus. Hiatus. Pretty sure it's pronounced hiatus. Who? Me? You think so? Fun. I guess maybe. I wonder how that feel. I guess it'd be kind of fun owning a stand like this. Hot dogs, get your hot dogs, they're in the house. Oh, shots, man. You're just saying that. Ah,、uh, come on, you. <laughs> the three of them took their hot dogs, laughing and laughing walked a short distance from the stand. And as if they had traded places, Tsugumi came up. Ah,、uh, everyone was eating hot dogs. Hey, I've got one for you, too. Sugumi took it without so much as a thank you and went to the corner of the room. Sora was talking with the kid. I was a bit sad that I couldn't make anything for her. Still leaning over, I stuffed my hot dog greedily into my mouth and watched everyone from where I was. It was May 3rd. It had been three days since we'd been trapped. But everyone was bright and showed no feeling of fatigue or sadness. Especially Coco. It was hard to believe that she had suffered so much that first night. For no reason, Coco was playing with Pippi's tail. Looking at her smiling face, I suddenly remembered how we had bumped into each other again. After I got her out of the elevator, I seemed to remember. Ah! Ah! And you're that girl from before. The girl and I pointed at each other and froze. I spotted the scruffy face of a dog circling around her feet. But what are you doing here? It is an escalator, it's an elevator, alright? No, not elevator. Elevator! If you're on a moving staircase, that's called an escalator. And if you're in a box that goes up and down, now that's an elevator. Try not to mix them up. Hmm, I don't ever remember this happening at all. Uh, Takeshi finding her. I don't think it was even mentioned. Really? Hmm? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I said that I got down on my stomach from the top of the elevator. I leaned down from the small hole and stuck my hand out to Coco. Coco held up Pippi to me, stretching as far as she could to make him reach. I grabbed onto Pippi's front legs and pulled him out from, from the hole in the ceiling. Okay, next is your turn, Coco. I stuck out my hand again. Coco jumped over and over, reaching out for my hand. But either she was too short or just had a terrible jump because she didn't even reach my fingertips. <laughs> Next, I look over to where Sora was. She was standing next to the kid and talking with Tsugumi about something. I couldn't hear what they were talking about from where I was behind the counter. Sora Akanegasaki. 
it was hard to believe she was only an illusion generated by RSD. I stared at her again from a distance. I thought about what we talked about the day before. ところで、クラナリさん、クラナリさんは月を見たことがありますか<笑> ？Yeah, are you kidding? では、満月の晩、クラナリさんが月を見上げていたとします。その時、クラナリさんが目を閉じてしまっても、月はそこにあると思いますか ？Oh, I'm guessing these are scenes you get if you, um, if you. If you try to access Coco's route from Takeshi's point of view, okay, that makes more sense. Why are you asking such obvious questions? Of course it would. ならば、世界中の人間が一斉に目を閉じたとしたらどうでしょう。I don't know what your point is, but even if everyone in the world closed their eyes, the moon wouldn't disappear. 本当ですか？ Yeah. どうやって確かめます？ Just open your eyes and check, right? それでは家庭に背くことになります。私がお尋ねしたのは、観測せずに月があるかどうかを確かめる方法は存在するかということです。That's why you take out a digital camera, close your eyes, and film the moon. <笑>クラナリさんが目を閉じた時にも、世界は本当にあるのでしょうか。もしも。私の画像だけではなく、このレミューの一切合切がすべて RSD による幻影だとしたら、クラナリさんが今ご覧になっている壁や天井やその他の景色のすべてを実像だと証明することができますか？<笑>ごめんなさい、冗談ですよ。That's a joke。ええ、レミューは確かに実在します。クラナリさんがあまりにも自信たっぷりのお答えになったので、ちょっとからかってみたくなっただけです。しかし、これだけは言えます。人間が世界を認識するためには、五感のうちのいずれかを使う以外に方法はありません。すべての感覚を失ってしまったら、世界があるのかどうかさえわからなくなってしまうのです。逆に言えば、視点こそが世界を作っていると言えるかもしれませんね。この場合の視点とは。視覚のことだけを指しているのではなく、聴覚、嗅覚、味覚、触覚のすべての感覚を指しています。物事を知覚するポイント、それが視点なのです。そして私は、私は月と同じなのです。Her existence disappeared when I closed my eyes, but I felt that Sora had just as much as no, maybe even more human warmth. Caring than the rest of us. Then again, there was Sugumi's coldness. Hmm. 見かけによらずまともなことも考えられるのね。What do you mean by that? そのまんまの意味よ。あなた、頭悪そうだから。これは罠よ。きっとあなたは出られない。いえ、あなただけじゃなく、他の四人もみんな同じよ。Oh, what about you then, Sugumi? I'm not sure. So, 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 I'm The next person to jump into my field of view was you. You had finished eating her hot dog and dancing hand in hand with Coco. I wonder if it were some kind of folk dance. She smiled so wide it seemed her face might split and laughed boist boisterously. Her eyes shone so brightly, but I knew behind those eyes was a hidden was hidden a past filled with sadness. Her father had disappeared 17 years earlier. I thought about the talk I had with you the day the day before. Maybe the reason she carried that album around with her was she wanted something to connect her with the memories of her father. I bumped into you and Coco in front of the ruins of Lemuria yesterday. In palm in the palm of you's hand was some kind of journal and notebook. She had it open and was staring at a page. Coco was standing next to her, busily peering over her shoulder. What you looking at? うんとね、うんとね、お写真
見てたの。Pictures? 見たい Sure. じゃあ、見せてあげよう。What you handed over to me was neither journal nor notebook. It was a single file. One small enough to fit in the palm of my hand. It was already open and, and had several pictures taken from an instant camera stuck between the pages. They were baby pictures. It can't be. Your baby? Baka! Haha! I'm still 18. I'm still a kid. Yeah, right. Which means that this baby is. So, this is what you were laughing about? Saying that you snatched the file out of my hands. Korega, Chikosan no Toki no Watashi de. Korega, Undokai no Owen Danzo Yatatoki no Yats de. Eh, do. Sorekara Koreba, Tugako no Nugakushiki no Toki no Sashin de so. You continue to flip through the pages. Koreba, Koko no Bunkasai no Toki ni Totta Yats. Keiko, Mimi, Deki, Chicha, Beef Yamamoto. これは一応先生ね。花火大会でしょ温泉旅行でしょアミちゃんちに泊まった時の写真でしょそれからそれから。んなんだこれああはいはいはいはい夜中に学校に忍び込んだ時のやつだ。うん。She didn't mention... She didn't mention Sarah at all. So... That adds to my theory more that this, you know, takes place before kids' roots. I don't know, I don't know. It's all gonna be revealed. It's all a mess in my head right now, but yeah. So much abuse history was there. Smiling faces, sad faces, silly faces, surprised faces, even shy faces. There were girlfriends, boyfriends, teachers, people, afternoons, nights, good times, and hard times. It goes without saying, but shown in those photos were people I didn't know, places I didn't know, and a you that I didn't know. You looked like she had no intention of stopping, so I rushed to get a word in. Um, you? So what is this like your life's so what is this like your life's history album or something? Uh so why are you carrying that with you? Really? You don't say. You murmured softly to herself as she flipped through the pages. Coco threw the question at me abrupt, abruptly. Before answering, I tossed the question back. How about you, Coco? You're probably still living with your parents, aren't you? Coco, Hmm? Why not? Oh, I see. And what about you, you? Are you living with your parents or. Oh, duh. Why did I ask that? I realized it had been a mistake to ask that. Yu's dad was missing, but it didn't seem as if she cared one way or another. What do you mean? 
あんまり物事に動じるようなタイプの人じゃないのよね無断外泊とかしても全然平気みたいだし今まで18年間あの人と付き合ってきたけどうるさく言われたことなんか一度もないんだ私公認主義で育てられたのだからこんな風になっちゃったのかもね You showed me a page from her album that she turned to. It was you with putting, with putting the hurt on some wrestler. The guy looked like a p o k e j o c k of sorts. Coming up by memories, I noticed the scene had changed a bit. You and the kid had taken off somewhere. Maybe they'd gone to the rest area next door. It's only been two days and so much has happened. Just being trapped here is an unusual state of affairs. I said these words to myself without thinking. Just then, Boom! Suddenly, a low metallic sound reverberated through the installation. It was a dull, muffled sound. What, what was that? Soresa! 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 Coco ran over to Sora. Close to her chest was Pippi. Coco was hugging him so hard he seemed about to rupture. What was that? フロアを支えるシャフトの一部に歪みが発生しました海流の乱れに影響された模様です誤差の範囲内だと思いますがいえ待ってくださいスバイトストックの倉庫圧力制御用の配管に異常がありますレミウムを覆っている多重隔壁その内部の圧力調整を行っているパイプです異常は警備ですから緊急は要しませんが倉庫の状況をご確認いただいた方がいいと思います万一これが破損していた場合私の力ではこれを修復することができませんお願いできますか、sure. Leave it to me. 私も行くわ me? You sure? 修理するなら工具類が必要なんじゃないの私なら色々扱い方を知ってる Alright, let's go. Coco, no, get it down, yo! Okay, you can come too, Coco. By the way, does anyone know where you and the kid went? Tanaka san to Shonen san wa, genzai KBS ni r a s h a i m a s What the heck are they doing there? Lemi to no contact to Kokoromi te iri yo des. With Lemi? What am I thinking? I've got other things to worry about. Alright, the three of us are going to, to the warehouse. Sora, give you and the kid an update of the situation, will you? わかりました。We opened up the door to the storage room to find the floor covered in water. The water level came up to the tops of my shoes. From the back of the room, we could hear a hissing sound coming from somewhere. The sound drew our attention. There was a faint crack in the pressure regulating pipe, and the water was dancing out of it in a fine mist. If that's all it was, it didn't seem like we had anything to worry about. It seemed like we'd be able to fix it in no time. Tsukumiya opened up the toolbox that was in the corner of the room and started spreading a few tools out in front of her. What did we need to do? Pipe was a little bit of 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 a little In this way, the three of us started working in unison. We opened and closed the valves on a number of pipes, reattached pipes, and welded shut cracks. Takeshi, don't worry about the next pipe. Huh? Oh, okay. First, the red valve will be closed. Then, the next valve will be closed. Then, the next valve will be closed. We fixed a number of pipes, but the sound of the escaping steam still hadn't stopped. So, here. 少しそこで待っててうん準備 OK だよたけし今言った順番でバルブをお願いちょっとたけし聞いてるのはいやオーライドオーライドオーライドオーライドオーライドオーライドそうよ緩めてそれから閉めるの I set myself upon the blue valve in front of me I was supposed to loosen this I'm supposed to turn this counterclockwise yeah turn the blue valve with all my strength The sound of rushing steam grew softer. Alright, next, close the red valve. The steam dancing from the pipe grew weaker. Alright, that does it. Okay! Coco, just a little bit. 
So is Sugimi gonna get hurt again? Hmm, I have a feeling she won't. Holding up her left hand to shield her face, Tsukimi operating the welding torch with her right hand. The crack in the pipe closed visibly. Okay. Tsukimi finished welding. Alright! Jeez! I quickly turned the valves in the opposite direction. I could feel the steam flowing through the valve. The water on the foot still hadn't gone down at all and was swirling around. The air conditioner on the wall was sucking in water and gurgling it out. The pier had also shorted out. I could see blue white sparks jumping around inside. I hope it doesn't shock me. As soon as I thought this, BAM! It sounded like the air conditioner was about to break apart. The smoke started pouring out from the exhaust vent. And from the intake port, murky water started gurgling now. The area around my legs was quickly getting grim and grimy. My leg got caught up in a jet of muddy water and I lost my balance. I reached out to grab something. I caught onto a stack of crates and old containers lying nearby. It made an ominous sound. My body draped awkwardly over the containers. I left in my gaze. The top of the stack was wobbling precariously. I looked I looked to Tsugumi. Our eyes met. She was frozen in place, holding her breath. I shot a glance over at Coco. She had her back turned to me and was grabbing onto a pipe. I looked up at the ceiling again. It all happened in an instant. The containers, having lost their balance, started to rain down. Chunks of metal, rusted pipes, thick iron cylinders. So, so she is going to get hurt again. There was no sign. I perceived everything in vivid slow motion. Countless pieces of metal, all pouring down quietly. Although my mind was spinning, my body couldn't catch up. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. Crashing metal. A raging monster. With its sight fixed on that small frame. Pouncing. Devouring. All of it headed for... Coco! Coco! <laughs> the sight that flashed before me was a mountain of metal. The old pipes broke apart into thousands of pieces. The containers splintered apart, their sharp corners flashing. I landed in the water. I had thrown myself out of the way, arms and legs flailing. The pipes on the wall were cracked. They had been damaged from the shock, and out of the cracks, water was gushing out, and Fallen nearby was... Fallen was... And she gets hurt. Tsugumi! I ran over to where she was. Coco looked around at the spectacle and hugged Pippi to her tightly, her hands trembling. Yes, I had seen it all. Just before the metallic objects had crashed down Coco's back, Tsugumi had thrust her out of the way. She protected her. We're all risking her own life. <laughs> the metal shard had dug deeply into Tsukumi's right thigh. It didn't look like she could move. <laughs> Tsukumi grimaced and pushed down on the wound. She was losing a lot of blood. The murky water was getting redder by the moment. Hey, you okay? This okay. <laughs> Stop laughing! I'm gonna get that stuff off you, just wait! I tried to lift the metal off of her, but no matter how hard I tried, the heavy chunk wouldn't budge. Damn it! In the meantime, the water level had risen from ankle to knee height. Coco started to rush over Tsugumi. Stunned by Tsugumi's cold words, Coco stiffened and stopped. このままだとこの部屋の核壁が持たないみんな死ぬことになるわだから早く逃げなさいバッ stupid idiot you think i can you think i can just leave you しょうがないでしょここから動けないしこの怪我じゃ 
Shut up! I roared out. I won't let you give up on me, damn it. Hey, Coco, what are you standing there for? Get on that intercom and contact the others. With all her might, Coco moved her trembling legs to get closer to the intercom. So run up and tell the others to get over here! Though she looked flustered, Coco nodded and ran off. The door to the warehouse closed. Soon, water came up to the bottom of the door. The water continued to rise. From her waist down, Sugimi was almost completely underwater. The water level was almost over my knees. I wouldn't be here if there wasn't a reason. I can't just leave you here. Doste? I've taken nothing but abuse from you, and you still haven't thanked me properly yet. Ah, so. Skimmy laughed weakly. Her lips were trembling. The murky water was spreading. Alright, Sugumi, I need you to stay with me now. I chose my words as carefully as possible. You'll be okay, the wound isn't that deep, so don't worry. I was lying. Even I could tell her wound was life threatening. Sugumi's white femur had broken through and protruded from her flesh. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. I wasn't paying attention, and you got hurt. The water level was rising up in Tsugumi's head. A section of the partitioning had broken and sea water was rushing in. The water was ice cold. The water volume increased mercilessly. Her face contorted with pain. In agony, she labored for breath. There wasn't any time. Making up my mind, I dove into the water. I couldn't open my eyes. All I could do was search the bottom using my intuition. Damn it! Using all my strength, I heaved up to the large mass of metal sticking with into Tsukumi's leg. Aided slightly by the buoyancy of water, the metal hunk moved slightly. Tsukumi pulled her leg out at once. I lifted my face out of the water, gulping greedily for air. The flooding wouldn't stop. The water level was already above my shoulders. Shut up and just keep quiet. With her leg injured, there was no way Tsukumi could swim. Holding on to her, I headed for the exit. But the door was already underwater. I told you to keep quiet. There's gotta be another exit. I'll look for that. It'll be okay. We'll find a way out of this. Would you keep quiet? I probably could have forced open the door if I had tried, but it would have put the second floor in danger of flooding. I searched desperately for an emergency exit. My legs wouldn't touch the floor. I could hardly breathe. I was at my limit. Ah! There's a ladder in the corner of the room. There's a ladder. We can easily get to the emergency passage. We're gonna make it, Tsukumi. I burst into the infirmary. I set the injured Tsukumi down on the bed. She was no longer conscious. She lost so much blood. We had to take emergency, emergency measures immediately. Hey, what are we going to do? You, who'd been waiting in the room, pushed me out of the way. A tourniquet was taken out from a rack of medical instruments on the wall and fastened around Tsugumi's thigh. What's the status? How bad is it? Can't we use that scanner to check it out? I pointed to the LMRI. Oh, yeah. Well, what can we do? What are we... Sora put her hands to Gumi, a holographic window appeared in the air. A small sensor, or camera, started moving on the ceiling. あくまで生体スキャンの応用ですから、はっきりとは申し上げられませんが、大体骨に損傷、複雑骨折しているかもしれません。それと、動脈が切れています。接待方法が必要でしょう。私、自分の指くらいなら縫ったことあるよ。サ
。他にもレーザーメス、監視、縫合紙、必要なものはすべてこの部屋にありますから。Sora moved the electric wagon and used its robotic, robotic arms to gather the necessary surgical tools. You flipped up Tsukumi's skirt and fearlessly plunged your hand into the wound. Kuranari, Jama. You pointed angrily at the exit. Uh, yeah, sorry. Take care of her, okay? Nakase nasai. You looked determined to show us all what she was capable of. As soon as I left the tense atmosphere of the emergency room, my fatigue hit me. Man, when when are we gonna experience something exciting? You know. <sighs> I sat myself down on a nearby chair. Tsukumi, what? Coco was holding onto Pippi, but looked as if she was having a hard time relaxing. Uh, you let you let them know right away, so she should be fine. Hunto? Coco's eyes were moist. It was hard to tell, but she had probably been crying moments earlier. Even still, she tried to smile. Ne ne, Tsugumi, Tsugumi, daijoubu da yo ne. Still looking worried. <sighs> she tilted her head as she asked me. Yeah, she'll be fine. Absolutely okay. Coco put her head on my shoulder. I held Coco close and patted her head softly. Daijoubu da yo ne. Daijoubu da yo ne. Her body trembling, she asked me this over and over. I thought maybe she had been trying not to cry until that moment. Coco head pressed against my chest started crying. Oh, <laughs> her cry makes me want to cry. Sort of painful to listen to, to be honest. <laughs> Is that Takeshi? Huh? <laughs> It's the kid. Huh? I shook my head back and forth. ってことは、ナッキュ先輩か？ I kept shaking my head. そっか、つぐみね。Again, I shook my head back and forth. え？それじゃあまさか、ソラが？ No, nobody is picking on me. じゃあ、どうして泣いてたの？ It's, it's. I was looking wildly around in all directions. We were in front of the emergency room. Sarah was standing right in front of me, but I didn't see anyone else. Huh? I said nothing but ran into the room. No one was there. She wasn't lying on the examination table. Kora, why did you run away? Sarah's eyebrows were raised questioningly. I didn't run away. I just wanted to just wanted to check something. Is all. So I'm guessing, huh? What if? Yeah. Of course, the kids' roots take place in the future. Takeshi's roots. This is what I think. The Takeshi's roots take place in the past. Yet the kid is experiencing both at the same time. So that I guess that's why. Uh, he, that's why he ran in here to check on Tsugumi, which she isn't here because she's not injured. On this, on this timeline, I stood to the side of the table and slid my hand across its surface. There was no warmth. 大腿骨に損傷、複雑骨折しているかもしれません。それと、動脈が切れています。接体縫合が必要でしょう。なんとかやってみるよ。麻酔は用意します。他にもレーザーメス、監視、縫合紙、必要なものはすべてこの部屋にありますから
All these voices jumped back and forth in my head. Voices, voices, voices. I twisted my head and turned, looking around the inside of the emergency room. Looking slowly, the noise from before seemed like a dream. Seemed? <laughs> what am I thinking? It was only a dream, just a dream. I looked straight into Sarah's eyes and answered. I want to see if it was real or a dream. I had a terrible dream. Why you met that? Tsukumi hurt her leg really bad. It was flooding in the storage area, and when she went to fix it, a big chunk of metal fell on her. And then Tsukumi, um, her, her leg got trapped by the metal. And she got a huge gash on her right thigh. I could see the yellow of her fat, the red color of her muscle, and the white bone. Her artery, lymph nodes, even nerve endings, all hanging out and pulsating like rubber tubes. Rubber tubes. The whole area was covered in a sea of blood. Well, it's not as if I wanted to see it. So, Falling? Was I crying? That's when I realized, on my cheeks and chin, there was something that felt cold. There was a small drop of moisture sparkling on my eyelash. I hurriedly wiped away my tears. So I had been crying. It all happened while I was sleeping, so I had no idea why I had been crying. ねえ、少年。ちょっと気になったことがあるんだけど。今さ、倉庫で浸水事故が発生してって。いや、それ本当に起きたんですけど。What?少年が眠ってる間に倉庫のパイプが破裂して水が流れ込んできたの。When I was sleeping? What was that supposed to mean? I couldn't fully grasp what was going on from what I've heard. My mind froze. What about Tsugumi? I didn't think it was possible, but I asked anyway. Really? For some reason I felt relieved. I wonder if it was because my dream had been so real. No, wait. Dream? I wouldn't have a dream about the warehouse flooding. I was sleeping. As though she had read my thoughts, Sarah said, She said as if she were making fun of me. But honestly, Sarah probably didn't take the possibility seriously. My mind was turning slowly, but hadn't started working normally again. Something was preventing me, preventing me from thinking. Out of body experience. If I could do that, I could peep down girls' underwear all I wanted. Wow. I made a stab at a joke. The fact that I could do so surprised me somewhat. Baka! Moron. <laughs> Sarah whacked me on the head a couple times. Taking the whole situation on, I started to laugh. ゆうべはあのまま、あっちの世界へ行っちゃうんじゃないかと思って、その様子だと全然問題ないみたいね。あれ覚えてないの少年、ブクブクと泡吹いて倒れてたじゃない。わお。<笑> みんなで少年を担ぎ上げて、この救護室に運び込んだってわけ。了解。I got it. The changing room. 
It was a rectangular room, and stuck to the back wall was a large mirror. Bench had been returned to its original position. I walked up to the mirror. I didn't recognize my face. I didn't recognize this kid. I touched my, uh, my eyebrow with my right hand. He touched his eyebrow with his left hand. A, B, C, D, E. Sounds like other came to my ears. The kid in the mirror mouthed the exact same words, but of course, I couldn't hear his voice. I reached out my left hand to touch him. He put his right hand and did the same thing. My nails hit the hard surface of the glass with a click, but I couldn't reach him. Looking closely, I could see a face floating over his left shoulder. Two pairs of eyes, two pairs, two pairs of eyes stared tensely at me. It had to be an evil spirit. Maybe he was even being possessed. That's so sad. It's been taken over by a demon. And as soon as I said that to me myself, I realized that he was looking at me. What? I'm being possessed? Ah, S -S Sarah! I jumped about three feet in the air, bending backwards as I left. W when did you get here? <laughs> Really? Apparently the person who'd been looking over my shoulder was Sarah. So you went and followed me? Mm. Sarah had grabbed onto her tied up hair with both hands and was swinging it back and forth. She pointed to the mirror with the tip of her hair. Well, uh... I pulled Sarah by the arm over to stand in front of the mirror. Both of our images were reflected in on the mirror's surface. The left and right side of her face was reflected back in reverse, but there was no mistaking it was her. My face on the other hand. Hey, who's that reflected in the mirror? This kid. The kid standing next to you. Who is he? Come on, I'm being serious. Is this really my face? Hmm, I guess you're right. I knew the answer, but I still had needed to check. This kid was me. The face reflected in the mirror was mine. Yeah, I'm fine. But I'm also not fine. A pounding Sarah was in the mirror. I looked at her figure in the reflection. She looked back at me. Our gazes intersected and overlapped at the same space at the same time. I couldn't remember my own face. I couldn't remember, and I still can't remember it. Of course, I understand that the person reflected in the mirror is me. But how can I say it? It doesn't feel real. That's why I passed out in front of the mirror last night. The face reflected, reflecting back at me in the mirror felt like someone else, someone I didn't know. うーん。でもさ、何も淡くほど驚くようなことじゃないんじゃないの?ある日突然鏡の中に救いようのない Sir glanced at the mirror and took a good look at my face. And so, and so saying, Sarah pointed the tip of her hair at mine. Look like? I look like you? I stare intently at Sarah's face. So Suddenly, a vast whirling pattern came into my mind. It spun round and round, round and round, paralyzing my ability to think. I d don't think so. I took all my will to n mumble just that. そうかな。目元のあたりとか似てると思うんだけどな。あ、なんでそんな嫌そうな顔するかな。褒めてるんだよ。Sarah started smiling shyly, and then, all of a sudden, she tickled my nose with the tip of her hair. Hey, what are you doing? I jumped back away from her. 
Sarah smiled mischievously. The smell of her hair seeped into my mind. It was a smell somehow so familiar, almost animal and private. The conference room. I was sitting in a chair, stuffing my mouth with a chicken... Chicken witch sand. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'd grown bored of the chicken sandwiches, so I invented my own version. A slice of bread between two pieces of meat. <laughs> it was definitely a needed change of pace. Sarah was sitting directly in front of me. Oh, what is that? Cabbage with ketchup? Sarah was eating straight from a head of lettuce with nothing but <laughs> ketchup as a topping. Well then, muttering in a voice so small I could barely hear, she was saying, I'm not getting enough vegetables. I'm just not getting enough vegetables. Say, where did everybody else run off to? With ketchup smearing around her lips, Sarah answered me. そうこの修理が完了したからみんな適当に一息入れてるんだと思うよ。ふん。そう、ウリアプライナックスサラ。別にどうもしないよ。ただひたすらレタスを食べながら、抽出されるのを待つだけ。サラ、can't over me? ゆうべ、少年を救護室に運び込んだ後、私たちは交代で少年の見張りをすることになったの。突然暴れ出したりするんじゃないかと思って、その幼稚のために。で、ついさっきまで私がその当番だったのね。だけど、ちょっと目を
Yeah, I guess you're right. Besides that one point, nothing else seemed out of place. Except, I was amazed how calm I felt analyzing the situation. Premonitions, the Phantom Girl, the Mirror Affair, Amnesia. Considering the countless number of strange things I had experienced, I was surprisingly calm. Not taking such strange events as strange was itself strange. Was I just desensitized to everything? Or maybe I've just never been the type to think too deeply about things. I didn't know why, but I felt fine about the situation. I walked a loop through around I walked a loop through around the entire warehouse and returned to where I started, only to find Sarah was gone. At that same moment I heard a sound. Like something pounding powerfully against a steel wall. I searched for the origin of the sound. A small door suddenly jumped into my field of vision. In front of the door stood Sarah. Sarah! I, I let out a yell and ran to her. What happened? I asked, Sarah, standing at Sarah's side. Sarah acted like there was nothing out of the ordinary. In fact, she seemed so normal that normal didn't begin to describe it well enough. The bashing sound continued un un unabated. It was coming from beyond the door. Someone was... It sounded like someone was throwing their body against the door. And they weren't holding back. It was an explosive force, almost animal in intensity. The sound reverberated to the core of my body, rattling my brain. Who is it? Hey, who's there? I yelled at the door. Huh? Confused, Sarah reached out and touched the door panel. The door opened. Nobody's in here. The room inside was dark. But even before I could turn on the lights, I can tell there was no one inside. So then, what was that noise just now? I turn around and look at Sarah. What do you mean, no clue? I'm just asking what that noise was just now. A noise, you know. Noise? The sound of someone ramming onto the door. That noise. Into the door. That noise. What? Sarah said this to me with a scornful look on her face. What are you talking about? その言葉、そっくりそのまま<笑> Hearing sounds that aren't there? You mean you couldn't hear it, Sarah? So, why were you standing in front of that door? Are you serious? まだマップの中で行ったことのない場所があったら、誰だって行きたくなるでしょ。まだ開けてない宝箱があったら、誰だって開けてみたくなるでしょ。まだ話しかけてない村人がいたら、誰だって開けてみたくなるでしょ。
began to dance lightly, circling around the small room like some Polynesian tribal dancer. Tribal dancer. But it made me dizzy, so I stopped. Out of breath, I leaned against the nearest wall for support. In front of me, I noticed a small square window. From outside the window, faint moonlight shone in. Huh? Moonlight? Sarah must have noticed the direction of my gaze because she began to walk toward the window. Speaking toward her backside, I said, Why would there be a window in a place like this? Eh? Sarah's feet stopped. She said that she spun around. Spun around. Isn't it a window? Because the light... Sarah shuffled backwards and planted her back against the wall. Uh, yeah. I guess Sarah's figuring out, figuring out that I can also see the infrared lights as well. As if being called by the light, I began to walk toward it. I knocked a few times against the window with my knuckles. I stopped and found the window. Except, it was not a window at all. It was a steel door buried in, in the wall. Yeah, it does. Sarah stood beside me and put her hand on the steel door. I also reached out and placed the flat of my hand on the door. The door seemed to sizzle with the penetrating heat. Without changing our pose, our eyes met. Sarah started to speak, but hesitated. She then opened her lips to try again, but stammered. Her breathing became rough. She seemed a little agitated. A red light seemed to emanate, emanate form from her body. So why does it look like it's shining? It was a very innocent, almost naive question. Without answering me, Sarah removed her hand from the door. I removed mine as well. Two faint handprints were left imprinted on the square steel door. Muttering, Sarah gently removed something from her pocket. Chick! A flame burned. An instant, the whole scene changed and Sarah's face was lit up in red. I realized that what Sarah had taken out was a pendant and a lighter. Without saying a word, Sarah brought the flame and pendant in front of my eyes. Inside the pendant, floating a holographic image of a man who I had never seen before. Who's this? When I asked this, Sarah's hand began to quiver. The flame shimmered. And from this, a large shadow was projected on the wall, which also flickered. So, Sarah shut the lighter. Yeah. Wait, hold on a second. Weren't you just telling me how how tired you were of all my premonitions and illusions? I can't say, I mean I don't really know. It's just that I thought it would be dangerous for her to open the door. Sarah looked at the ceiling. She then looked at the square door and the wall, then the pendant held tightly in her hand, then finally looked slightly upward into my eyes. There was a long silence. Sarah looked deep in thought, or maybe as though she wasn't thinking anything. The only sound was her steady, steady measured breaths. At last, at last, she spoke. <sighs> Sarah took a deep breath and put away the lighter and pendant. We left the room. Sarah took a big stretch. I repeated my question to her. Sarah, whose image was that independent? As she walked toward the exit, she answered. Hmm? Person from the sun? What? Well, whatever. Uh, I, I still don't know who that is. After that, Sarah and I headed to the conference room. We didn't have any specific objective in mind. Actually, we made for the conference room because we didn't have any objective. It wasn't that anyone had said we would meet there. Somehow, it just became our meeting place and hangout. We were all there. Soren Zagashi teased, teased me saying that the night before I had been flailing around like a crab on its back. They said that I worried them, but they thought I looked bad. It was almost exactly the same thing I had heard from Sarah. They asked why I had gone crazy when I saw the mirror, but I avoided giving a clear-cut answer. I didn't think that I could get them to understand a situation as com complex as that by telling them the real reason. It appeared that Takeshi and Sora were satisfied with my invasive explanation. And then, small talk started. 
and strangely, we only talked idly, gossiping about things and not touching on Lemu at all. We talked about the best movies we'd ever seen and why do whales strand themselves on the beach in groups? And what was the truth behind the assassination of JFK, as well as which whether forks or chopsticks were better? Topics changed often and we talked about a wide range of things, from serious to the silly. In short, we were just killing time. We tried to fill in time by keeping our mouths moving. We didn't participate much in the conversation and just kinda nodded from time to time and laughed along with everyone. It's not that I was necessarily thinking about anything else, I just thought of it all as a painless way to kill time. In the group, there was one other person who was just as quiet as myself, even more so, since she didn't open her mouth once. It was Tsugumi. Tsugumi looked as furious as ever. She had a constantly dissatisfied look, making it seem as if she had been dissatisfied from the day she was born and was probably destined to stay that way. I figured if she were that annoyed, she should come to where she shouldn't come to where had everyone gathered. But of course, I couldn't say that to her. Tsugumi glanced at me at a rate of once every two minutes. In the afternoon, two days before, the first of May, she had been short with me. She had told me not to talk to her. However, her looking at me about once every two minutes was totally at odds with those words. It seemed like a sign saying, speak with me. The glances unnerved me and was able to, unable to focus my attention on the conversation. Eventually, the four others got tired of talking and gradually the conversation slowed down. Finally, the talking ground to a halt completely. Five hours had passed since we had come to the conference room. Everyone was silent. You rested her chin on her hands and watched the plant in the corner of the room. Sarah put her face on the table and closed her eyes. Takeshi stood by the window and stared at the ocean. Sora was not there. She had gone back to the control room. Tsugumi had just stood up. She headed toward the exit. She touched the panel to open and close the door. Just before she left the room, she looked at me again. It bothered me. I couldn't let it not bother me. A while after Tsugumi had gone, gone out, I... I'm going to the bathroom. Saying that to everybody, I followed Tsugumi. I followed the sound of water splashing and soon found Tsugumi. She was walking ahead of me in the curved corridor. I ran to Tsugumi and asked her, Hey, why did you keep looking at me? Tsugumi didn't stop walking. She didn't even look at me. I stepped ahead of her and stood in her way. You were shooting sideways glances at me, right? And then you glanced at me when you left the conference room. So, well... You're right. But you start watching me first. No problem, but... あなたは誰かに見つめられると潮の柱になってしまうような得意体質の持ち主。ははは。No. Saying that Tsugumi started to walk. I blocked her way, holding out my arm. Wait a minute. Don't change the subject. What I want to know was the reason why you were glancing at me. 理由がなきゃダメなの? 人を見ることに理由が必要なの? You're trying to change the topic again. あなたはどうしてそんなくだらない質問をするの? Because I want to know. 何が? About you, Tsugumi. Tsugumi, you want to say something to me, don't you? Tsugumi looked down. She dragged her legs slightly on the ground behind her. The ripples spread over the surface of the water. Tsugumi's eyes followed the direction ripples spread absently. She looked up. We stared at each other. Tsugumi pushed her hair back softly with her little finger and said, She spoke in a mild, calm tone. Hey, Tsugumi, why do you keep trying to hide so many things? You can't trust us yet? できない. Then why do you help us with repairs when the flooding accident happened today? What? You can look at that any way you want. It's not important. What is important is that you try to help us anyway, right? Tsugumi said it simply. Tsugumi 
人が死んでいくのを黙って見ているわけにはいかない特にこんな状況ではね It was an unexpected answer Little by little Tsukumi might have been seeing our side of things Alright then I'll ask you a different question You show yourself around us often even though you're saying that you don't trust us, right? If you doubt us, you don't have to hang out with us You can act on your own Tsukumi, you actually want to be buddies with us, don't you? I was kind of taking a gamble. If she had an answer back like something like, Fine, if that's what you want, I'll never show my face again. Then that would have been the end of things. I waited for her reaction. <laughs> Tsugumi laughed. <laughs> she kept shaking her head and laughing hard. W what's so funny? That's it. Tsukumi covered her mouth as she kept laughing. Hey, hey, stop laughing! I I'm being serious! <laughs> If I'm wrong, then what is it? If you don't want to be buddies with us, then why do you come to where everybody is? Yeah. What? <laughs> What? I don't know. I, on I answered honestly. Jewel chocolate is not a no chocolate. It is a chocolate. It is a chocolate. It is a chocolate. そのおもちゃの指輪は全部で34種類あるの。There again. 17 times 2 equals 34. それらをすべて集めようと思ったらひたすらチョコを買い続けなくちゃいけない。でもこれってちょっと変だと思わない主従関係が逆転しちゃってるのよ。本来ならチョコの方が主で指輪の方が銃だったはずなのに。指輪を集めている人にとってはチョコの方が副次的な存在なの。そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。でも、そういうこと。Tsukumi stopped talking. The smile was gone from her face. She stared at me without a, with a serious look. It was a tense look. Just looking at her deep and dark colored eyes, I felt as if I were about to be absorbed. But I couldn't look away. I couldn't even budge. My body was stiff like a pillar of salt. As she said that, I didn't know why, but suddenly she touched my ear. She traced the outline of my ear and pinched my ear low tenderly. In that moment, my body burst into, burst into fragments. I don't remember what happened after that. I just found myself in the middle of the corridor, standing in a daze. Tsukumi had disappeared at some point. I wonder what she may, means by that. Tsukumi's voice echoed in my head. I wobbled, back, I wobbled back to the conference room. <laughs> When I entered the room, only you and Sarah were there. They were lying on the table, breathing as if they were asleep. Oh, Their legs were facing me. I could almost see their. Okay then, <laughs> I could almost see their underwear. But I was not interested in it. Not interested? I pretended not to be interested. I walked to the side of the table and shook his body slightly. She opened her eyes, rubbing one of them with her hand. Ah, so na. Okay. You'll catch a cold sleeping in a place like this. Saying that, you hug Sarah's body tightly. Sarah says something in delirium, but she didn't seem to wake up. I figured they both had to be tired. Where's Takeshi? Merry Go Land. You mean the merry-go-round with dolphins? Did he go alone? 
As I asked, I realized that I have already known the answer. Sora was in the control room. I had met Tsugumi a minute ago. You and Sarah were holding each other like koalas in front of me. You answered me. Having a nice time. You might have been half in a dream. She closed her eyes slowly. I went up to the emergency stairs and headed for the merry-go-round. I thought briefly that it would be nice to go to sleep between you and Sarah, but unfortunately I was not sleepy at all. Besides, I was curious about what was Takeshi doing at the merry-go-round. If I remember right, Takeshi had been sitting on a dolphin earlier in the day as well. Sarah had told me that. I wondered if riding on the merry-go-round alone was fun. But that was something fun for him, Takeshi was kind of freaky. <laughs> I can imagine Takeshi having fun by himself. But if he wasn't there for the amusement, then I want to know the reason why he was going to the merry-go-round so often. Anyway, I was itching to find out the truth. That's why I didn't mind climbing up 51 feet of stairs. I came out on the straight corridor. After I walked a while, I could see a door on the left side. There was a dolphin merry-go-round through the door. The door had been left open. I sneaked into the room trying not to make a sound. Takeshi was there. He was alone as I expected. Takeshi was all alone. He was wandering around in front of the merry go round as he screamed nonsense. What the heck, Takeshi? <laughs> it was as if he were chasing something invisible. He might have thought he was chasing butterflies over the flower garden. That was what it looked like to me. Takeshi was talking to a fake dolphin, tropical fish, and seaweed. There was obviously something wrong with him. He was sicker than I imagined. There was no time to laugh. I was paralyzed with fear and didn't even have the presence of mind to feel sorry for him. He's gone crazy because he's locked up in a place like this. We didn't even notice, but somewhere along the line, he just snapped. Seemed like Takeshi was worried about the dolphins. He clasped my hands together as if I'm in a prayer pose. I decided to leave without saying anything. I decided to pretend I hadn't seen it and, keep, and kept it to myself. I started walking toward the exit. As the distance between myself and Takeshi grew, I couldn't hear what he said. Only one thing reached me. Clone Law? Clone Law? Is Takeshi remembering the stuff Sora said to him? Wait, wait. Not only can the kid remember what Takeshi can remember, but he himself can too? What? And then my vision twisted crazily. Wait, maybe the attack hit before his voice did. I didn't know. I didn't know, but in any case, I lost my sense of balance. I couldn't tell what was up or down. It was such a sudden change that it threw me. I felt an urge to vomit, and a headache. Who are you? Who am I? It was my voice, but it wasn't mine. I lost consciousness. I crashed to the floor. Was it me that fell, or someone else that wasn't me? I felt myself sinking into the ground. Was I sinking, or was the floor trying to swallow me? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Kuronho? 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 into the pure white darkness. 